Hello, so we're going to do another video with you today. Um, we're going to be doing a quick, clean, simple, easy Christmas card for you that would be great for doing as batch cards. We're going to be using our brand new um, Christmas ornament stamp set. We're also going to be using the clean colour brushes, brush, sorry, clean colour brush pens, festive berries distress oxide, uh, onyx black versafine, crystal clear embossing powder, um, and our blending brushes. Also our glue which comes in the two sizes which is the 120ml and the 30ml and we are also going to be using the stickles so let's have a closer look. Bear with me while we swap these screens around. No, nope, we don't want that one on there. There we go. So this is the, what we're going to be using. So we've got the Christmas ornament stamp. So you get the two stamps in here, you get the large stamp with your ornaments and your string and then the words on the top Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're also going to be using the glue as I mentioned in the two comes in the two sizes we've got the 120ml and the 30ml. We've also got um, Stardust stickles those of you that haven't seen stickles used before we will go through those for you through that for you it's really really easy. Stickles is just a clear glue with colour in it um, this particular one is clear with coloured glitter in it. Um, some of them you can get are a coloured glitter too, a, gl a coloured glue as well, just to make it slightly stronger. Um, as I mentioned, Festive Berries Distress Oxide, Onyx Black Versa Fine, um, Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. Um, the coloured pens we are using today are, oh, sorry, we've got the blending brush, we've got a water brush, which hopefully. I won't make too many mistakes, but it'll show you how to try and rescue some of your mistakes. And the colours we're using the brushes, the pens in are light blue, cobalt blue, light, oh, I'm very sorry, light violet, deep violet, red. I've got enough hands here. We've got yellow, light green, yellow green natural beige and then we have the blending brush which is just a completely clear ink. So they're the colours we're going to be using today. So we're going to get started. As I said it's a really easy simple card today, nothing complicated at all. We have three pieces to it today. We have the 8x8 card, we have a piece of green Miri card but you can use whatever colour card you have or you can colour it yourself, the choice is yours. And then we have a piece of watercolour cardstock um, and the size of the watercolour cardstock is six and a half inch square. The mirror card is seven and a quarter inch. It just gives us a slightly bigger border this time. So I'm going to put everything to one side, just need our watercolour cardstock. We're working on watercolour card because I find that um, is the best to use for blending the with the pens. So we're going to take our ink, our stamp and our VersaFine ink in Onyx Black and we're going to heat stamp that out, ink your stamp up, take your stamp to your, so your ink to your stamp, not your stamp to your ink. Lots and lots of little light taps all over. As you can see, I'm not very good at cleaning my stamps. Um, it doesn't matter. It will still work perfectly fine. <coughs> now remember, the amount of ink you put on here is the amount of ink that's going to transfer onto your um, stamped image. So make sure you get plenty of ink on there. Don't press really hard, just lots of little light taps. And you go in probably to roughly about there, I'm trying to get that as straight as I can. I think that's about straight. Well, that's where it's going anyway. So we're going to give that a good push, press down really hard. And I do kind of just sort of move my finger over each ornament just to make sure that they've stamped out and I'm happy with them. And then I'm going to lift that straight off, pop that to one side, and as quickly as possible, I'm going to pop some crystal clear embossing powder over the top of that. As I've said before, VersaFine ink doesn't particularly like embossing powder, so you've got to persuade it to take it. So be as quickly as you can. So you're just going to shake the excess off, give it a light tap. Don't be tempted to give that a good flick because it will knock all of that embossing powder off there. Just a little light tap will take your excess off. And then we're going to put the excess powder back in your pot. And if you're 
a confidence damper, then go back in with your sentiment. If you're not, heat that first and then go and pop your sentiment on. It just makes it easier, you've only got to do it once. For me, anyway, I find this easier. So ink your stamp, plenty of ink, as I said. And then I'm gonna kind of try and aim, I'm hoping not to get my head in here. Try and aim to get that fairly level on there so it looks like the ornaments are hanging off the sentiment. Again, press that down. and lift straight off. Bossing powder over the top. And take your excess off. Sorry, you got a whole view of my arm there. I just put my carry sheet in the wrong place to put my embossing powder back. So, there we go, that's out of the way. We're gonna heat this from underneath. As you've probably heard me mention before, it just puts a barrier between you and the, the heat, so your heat gun and the powder. Um, that's fairly straight, I think. It's difficult to do when you can't look over the top of it. So I'm going to heat that up. Get your heat gun as hot as you can before you try and heat it. It just helps prevent the paper from warping too much. Bear with me a couple of minutes. Little bit of a wiggle while it's still wet to try and um, take away some of that warping of the cardstock. It won't flatten down perfectly straight at the moment, but that helps. So we're now going to go in and colour these with our clean colour pens. Always have a piece of kitchen paper with you when you're working with the clean colour pens. Um, it, I'll give you the tips as we're going along, but we're just going to quickly colour this in. You will spend a little bit longer colouring this than me. Um, you've just got to make sure that you spend some time rather than rush it. So just going in with the green and I'm now going to go in with the red. I have to remember to talk to you when I'm doing this because I am quite good at going into my own little world when I'm colouring or painting. I'm terrible for that. Switch off. Um, as I said, We've embossed this, as you've seen, and because of the type of inks that are in here, they tend to sit on the top where you've embossed. So go in and blot that before you go on to your next one. And try and remember doing that each time. It will make a huge difference and stop you making a mess or smudging it. Um, I'll show you in two, or you can see from the camera how much ink came off the top of that image. And you will smud be able to smudge that amount of ink all the way around your card and you don't really want to do that. So just going to go in and block each one as we're going along. Um, I'm trying to kind of work along as we go so we're going to just do this little snowflakey thing here um, in light blue and then we're going to go with the green. So this one is yellow green. Put those two out of my way for a moment. So we've got the yellow green now the yellow green, I'm just going to go along one edge and I want the yellow green to be the predominant colour. So I'm not going to blend it with another colour, but I am going to take the blending pen, which is a completely clear pen, has clear ink in there, 
and if I bring this into the camera I'm not going to be great at this because I'm doing it in the air but as you can see it picks up that ink and pulls it across so it takes the ink over but doesn't make it as dark as it is on this side so it blends it but without um, you can see it it's not really showing on this colour but it picks up this your blending pen will pick up the colour so all I'm going to do is go in onto that kitchen roll and just slowly pull that down and it takes our blending brush back to the nib being back to completely clear. I'll just pop that to one side and we're going to go back in with the red and colour in across the top of the mushroom. Again, I'm not going to go all the way across, I'm going sort of two thirds and then I'm going to take that blending brush again, this will show you what I mean, and it will just pull that colour across just a little bit just so it's not so solid on that side. If I bring that up you can see how this section here isn't as dark as this section. But you can also see that the blending brush has picked up all that red. So literally all I'm going to do is hold it down on the kitchen paper and drag away. To spin it round, hold it down and drag it away. And as you can see now our blending brush is completely back to being clear. Uh, and then we're going to take some natural beige and just colour in the bottom of the mushroom and again go back in and blot because you don't want those colours transferring along as you're going. So I'm now going to go in with some deep violet just along one edge again and then I'm going to take the light violet and pull that colour across. And I do this in circular motions, it just makes it easier, you don't get that harsh line of the blend. Again, blot that image. We're going to pop some yellow on this one. And I'm just going to pop some yellow in these little circles here. Now this card I'm pretty much going to do for you from start to finish. Now I'm just going to go in and colour in all the tops of my ornaments because I have that colour in my hand and that's the colour I wanted to put on the top. Just be a little bit careful, remember try and keep your hand out of the, those images as much as you can. And I'm just going to blot right the way across there because obviously we did all of those. Um, it wouldn't take up too much of the colour but just enough. So we're going to go in with the cobalt blue on this one. And again just down one side it's fairly strong this blue colour. Um, so then I'm going to take the light blue and pull that across. I'm only going about a third, of, another third across. So we're about two thirds across. Then I'm just going to wipe my brush off. And that will clean off any of the darker colour that's been picked up by this brush. So that as we go across to the final side, it blends right down to a much lighter colour. And I'll show you again with the bell on the end. We're going to use some red. So this is the plain, just red, 0, 2, 0 red. And just the tiniest line across the outside edge. And then I'm just going to take the yellow and pull that red out. Again, going about two thirds of the way across, I'm going to wipe that red off the top of my brush and then go back in and finish. Just give that little bell on the end there. And again, remember, go in and blot those last colours that you've just done. So that's the hardest part done. And as you can see, that wasn't particularly hard. So I'm just going to pop these brushes. now. In, this is entirely your choice whether you 3D decoupage these or not. I'm going to show you some decoupage just because it just adds a little bit of interest to it, I think. Um, so I stamped this part of the ornaments out again on towards colour card and coloured them again. Um, so you end, And cut them out so you end up with some of the little ornaments 
ready to go. Now, if you colored these and you don't like a particular color that you've done, you can always do this, put one over the top in a color that you do like. So that's entirely your choice. I'm just gonna pop those to one side for a second and I'm gonna take the Festive Berries ink, pop some color down on the mat, take my blending brush. Now these are quite bendy, these brushes. So it allows you to put, give more pressure or less pressure as you're going along. So the choice is entirely yours. I don't want a really harsh line around the edge. So I'm just gonna go in bit by bit and you can build the color up. And I'm putting hardly any pressure on there at all. Pick up a little bit of the color, blend it round. Now, as far as these clean color pens goes, okay, so that's pretty much as much color as I want around there. So, sorry, I kind of blended off there, didn't I? Um, so I think that's enough blending around the edge. Um, just put the lid back on there because I'm really good at spreading this red ink everywhere. Now, if you're really, really good, um, I don't want to load, quite often when I've got the blending circles, I'll tell you to pick up all that ink onto there, ready to roll. You can, you can take the sponge that you already have and pick as much of that ink up as you want. So you, that just means that your sponge is ready, loaded to go. Um, but I'm not gonna do that with the brushes because I don't want to completely fully load a brush every time. Um, Cause I lo quite like the fact that they, you can get quite a light detail with that. So either have yourself some scrap paper cardstock ready to make yourself a background with that. Or as I'm making this video and I don't want it to be 10 years long, um, I'm just gonna wipe that up quickly and pop that clean that away. So that's the hardest bit done. We're now going to just mat and layer these two up. Now I'm going to do the layering before I do any of the inking. Oh, bear with me, my glue's decided to block itself up. That's not very handy. Oh, it really did block itself up. because I broke all my rules and left it standing up on the side here rather than not laying it down. You'll have all heard me talk about laying your inks, your glues down. They're less likely to block up. It doesn't mean that they won't, but they're less likely to. So we're just gonna pop the Miri card down in the center of that card. Try and not get too much glue all over the place. <laughs> and then the same with this. Now, if you just wanted a one dimensional card, you can do exactly what we've done here, leave it as it is. It would just go through the post as a large letter with no, um, embellishment on there. If you want to pop embellishment now, try not to handle where that ink is too much if you've just literally just done it. You want to try and not smudge that ink as much as possible. There's a couple of pieces that I can see that I've managed to stick my finger in it, which is exactly what I didn't want to do. So remember I said earlier, hopefully I wouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to have to. I've got my, um, water brush and I'm just, there's a couple of spots here that I've got some of the red and I'm just gonna go on with some water and pick those up. There we go, now it looks like it's meant to be there. That one's still a little bit strong. You won't be able to clear it all off completely, but you will get a big chunk of it off. So it looks like it's kind of not, a major mistake. But I do try and not do too much touching of these straight away. I try and leave them to one side. Now the reason I've put this on straight away was because I wanted to show you some um, stickles and how it works before I move on to putting these pieces on. Um, now I said to you earlier I could stamp some more out, 
coloured them in and cut them out because I'm going to decoupage some of these pieces. Um, so that's exactly what that is. All I've done is cut them out, um, colour them, cut them out. I've popped some stickles on there already, so they're already dry. Um, so I'm just going to show you what I would have done here. So we're just going to go in with the stickles, just run along the ribbons. Should have started on this side because now I'm going to be going in across where I've already inked or glittered. It's a clear glue with a glitter in it. So you do need to set it to one side to dry once you've done this. Now I'm going to make all my clasps a bit sparkly. And again, you don't have to be perfect for this. Um, it doesn't matter if it's not exactly how where you stamped it. It's just to give it a little bit of a sparkle. And then I'm going to go in wherever I've gone, wherever the drawing is black wherever the ink is black just to add and where there's detail on the stamp just to add that little bit in there because the black can be quite dull and then a snowflake has to be sparkly doesn't it so I'm going to go all the way over the top of that snowflake um, just to add a little bit of sparkle here each one of the, the dots on the mushroom or toadstool or whatever you want to call it I'm going to go around my yellow circles and all the time I'm just squeezing a little bit of that glue out each time. So if that's where you wanted to leave it and you didn't want to put the decoupage pieces on there, you can. There's absolutely nothing that says that you need to add these extra pieces on. This is just me showing you something else you can do. Okay, so that's our stickles all over our card. You probably won't be able to pick that up but there's glitter glue on there and I'm just going to leave that, we normally just leave that to dry. Now obviously I want to pop some of these pieces on to show you the decoupage pieces. My goodness I thought I was going to do a really quick video and we're already 22 minutes into this. Good grief where does the time go? doesn't want to stick on the wet glue that's there but you'll get the idea. I should have probably avoided the ones that I knew I was going to do this to but I didn't so never mind. Somebody's decided they're going to mow their lawn on a Sunday afternoon out or Sunday morning out there and oh, I don't know why people do it on a Sunday. <laughs> so there we go. There is our finished card. So from start to finish, apart from watching me cut that out, uh, which is probably as long as it took me to tell you, or well, didn't even take as long as that to tell you what products we're going to use today, um, that is our card finished with a little bit of decoupage if you want to. Tiniest little amount. Um, so that is a really quick, easy card to do. Now I just want to show you a couple of things about the clean colour pens. So I've got myself a piece of plain watercolour cardstock here. Now there's lots and lots of little colours, so I've made myself a little chart. And all I did, because when you look at these colours on the ends here, they don't look like the colour they actually are on the ink. Well, I don't think they do. Um, so I decided to do myself a little colour chart. So have a look here's the red the red's probably the, a good one to I suppose it does really but I didn't think it did um so I did myself a little color chart I did it the old-fashioned way because I've done it onto watercolor card um so I wanted to be able to blend things through and then as I'm doing some mixing and finding colors I like I've also done that here so on the other side of my chart I've got like that's what red and yellow look like together carmine red and yellow um purple and shadow mauve together so there we go just don't look at my dreadful writing because I write like a, I think I was a doctor in a previous life um so this one here the bottom here is light blue and cobalt blue then we've got deep violet and light violet then we've got green and light green 
then we have got green and pale green. Then we've got wine red and pink, deep red and um, sugared almond pink. I think that's quite a really nice colour. Blue and light blue, deep blue and haze blue. Again, quite, quite a deep colour. And then purple and shadow mauve. So just as you're working along and finding the colours you like that work together, just do that to your little chart. It gives you some, um, some something to look back on. So I'm just going to grab a couple of colours you saw me colouring in, but it's quite a small piece. So I just thought if I did a little bit here, I can give you an idea. So we've got some red down and then I'm just taking the yellow brush and I'm just going to, in circular motions, move that colour around. So you can go from being bright red at the top all the way down to a really nice yellow at the bottom. You can also do this, so you take your lighter colour, hold your darker colour together. So your yellow has now picked up some of that orange, or sorry, that, that red. And you can just work that through. And you will end up with the yellow at the bottom. So there's lots and lots of ways of using these, these brushes. You can mix colours together. So if you haven't got all the colour range you want, now let me just grab my collection of pens because when I first started out, I had the basic colours and I had a blue and I had a brown. But my brown, the brown, basic brown brown in here is quite a red brown. So I took the red brown and I took my blue, which is not that blue. the blue sorry so I took my brown and I took my blue and I just popped a load of brown down on my mat so as you can see it's quite a red brown and then I popped a little bit of blue at the side and I took a paintbrush And I mix the two together. You need a little bit of water, let me grab my water brush to mix them because my brush was completely blown dry. That doesn't help. I may have mixed a bit too much blue there, but we'll have a look. And then I got a much deeper brown. Can you see? the two different colours. So there's so much you can do with these pens. So don't just think I've got one colour and I can't do anything else with it. There are so many colours you can make out of these pens. Um, there's, it's just endless. Um, so enjoy playing with the pens. See what you can do with them. Remember that technique where you can move one colour over to the other brush. So you can take the light colour over to the darker colour. You can mix two or three colours together. You can mix you don't have to go just from a light to a dark or a dark to a light. And you get a completely seamless blend. There's no line that goes through there. Down to your own colour. Remember that tip to tip. It's going to pick that up, but it won't ruin your brushes. It will work itself out. And there you go. Back to its normal colour. So enjoy playing with the brushes and have some fun with them. Or the pens, the real brush pens, I'm forever calling them brushes. But that's just a couple of little tips and ideas of things that I've found while I've been using them. So let's have a look at some cards that we've made as well using the same ornament, Christmas ornament stamp. So this one is just done with a coloured background and some purple ornaments hung on there. We've also used, this one was done by Marianne, I think, and she's also used the... Christmas flourishes on there instead of putting the words for the flourishes to hang off which I think is quite nice this one shows the same sort of technique again Christmas flourishes in there as well as the Christmas ornaments this one is using our Christmas gift set or sorry the gifts stamp set our Christmas ornament stamp set and our Christmas flourishes stamp set so the new Christmas releases all work really well together here's another one that's using the 
um, ornaments and the Christmas flourishes and then the words at the bottom so you can see all the different things you can do with it <coughs> and the final one to show you is again um, the Christmas ornaments this one's been masked off a little bit so you can overlay the ornaments a little bit as well <coughs> excuse me and the Christmas flourishes across the top and the words through the middle so we're just going to quickly come back to what we have used today if I can grab hold of my stamp so we've used the Christmas ornament stamp set we've used the VersaFine Onyx Black we've used Crystal Clear Embossing Powder we have used Clean Colour Pens in the colours we use today are we've got the Blending Brush we have Cobalt Blue we've got Pale Blue Pale blue, cobalt blue and pale blue. We did that was just for the demos, those two. We didn't use those in the thing. Um, we've got light green, yellow green, yellow, red, natural beige, light violet, and deep violet were the colours we used today. But use what colours you like to use, you can do them all in the same colour if you want. There's nothing that says you have to mix them. We obviously use the blending brush, we use the vest uh, the distress oxides, infested berries. Had a water brush on standby, thankfully, um, and we used the Stardust Stickles. So we just have another quick look at the finished card. Remember it has got glitter glue on there, so you do need to leave it just to sit for a little while on its own. Um, let's take that one off. So there we go. So that's us done. Oh, sorry, you got my arm right in the middle of that. So that's the card for today. If anybody's got any questions or if you'd like to see some more or you've got something you want to ask us about any of the things or any of our products, you can either email us at honeydewcrafts.co.uk or you can um, message us on Facebook or through Instagram or through Twitter or through whatever form of medium you want um, or you can email us at honeydewcrafts.co.uk. So have a lovely day and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, bye.